guys, today I wanted to tell you about a big plan to save a tiny rabbit. <clears throat> In June uh, 2017, John Gailey, a wildlife biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife watched, uh, watched from a ridge as wildlife wild, wildfire tore across the dry hills of eastern Washington. This shrub tip landscape is uh, usually a serene expanse of pale green. Instead, a swirling miles room of smoke and flames was burning through every after acre. Gally's eyes stung from burning sagebrush. Firefighters were asking us what the hell we were doing here, he says. Some might argue the undeveloped shrublands might have been better left alone to burn. But Gailey had a singular reason to stay. He wanted to help protect the endangered species here that he had spent the last five years of his life working to restore. Across the shrub step, pygmy rabbits were sheltering in burrows in the forest pass. Gailey and his crew were determined to do whatever they could to save the endangered animals, just as they had worked to save the rabbits from a seemingly endless series of disasters before. The fire, which came to be known as the Sutherland Canyon Fire, was one of many obst obstacles Gailey and others have faced in two de decades of attempts to boost the population of the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit. With bodies about the size of a mango, they are North America's smallest rabbit species and among the only ones to dig their own burrows. For thousands of years, these rabbits have lived on the Columbia Plateau, which stretches across, across eastern Washington and Oregon and into Idaho. Under normal circumstances, they play a critical role in the local food chain. They feast on the plateau sponged sagebrush for at least half of their diet and in turn raptors, weasels and coyotes feast on them. But human presence has battered their existence. Uh, the rabbit's native habitat has been fragmented by development and farming. In 2001, biologists monitoring the rabbits could only find one colony landing the species on the federal endangered species list, with fewer than 50 individuals left. The Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbit was a whisker away from the extinction. Uh, in the last two decades, hopeful state and federal wildlife biologists, rabbit fans, farmers and ranchers conservation, research, zoos and non-profits have all come uh, together to give the rabbits a fighting chance against seemingly insurmountable odds. It's not easy even when the species they are trying to save can be breed like, well, rabbits. The heights are incredible moments of success and excitement, while the lows are crushing and catastrophic losses, Gally says of the effort. But both are usually short-lived until the next game-changing event. Pygmy rabbits rally on a landscape of mature sagebrush that has been repeatedly damaged or fragmented by development and extreme wildfires. 
strips of a mind in sage brush have allowed them to travel between larger areas. Morgan Freeman. To save the rabbits, save the sage brush. To understand the plight of the pygmy rabbit, you must also consider the state of the sagebrush habitat it depends on. Call it the sagebrush sien for its post pale green uniformity. This landscape is deceptively rich, says Corinna Hansen, land manager for the Nature Conservancy Small School and Brisley Hills preservers in the in eastern Washington. Together, their preservers contain 33,000 acres of sharp steppe and arid ecosystem of grasses and sharps, including many species of sagebrush. Um, in spring, showy yellow bal balsam root, purple sagebrush, violet and other flowers and burst and blushes of color to the sea of green. Um, Western mid meadow larks fill in the morning soft light, no deer, deer more quietly across the hills, and small reptiles hide in the shadow of the age. All to Altogether, this diverse habitat is home to more than 200 species of birds and at least 30 species of mammals, as well as reptiles and amphibians. Since the 17th, 80% of the sagebrush ecosystem in Washington has been lost to development and farming, and nearly one million more acres across the West are lost each year. In its place, cheatgrass, a fast-growing invasive weed, has quickly spread across portions of the region. An aggressive invader it dries out early each year, making it highly uh, flammable. Now, instead of burning every 30 to 100 years, uh, fires can occur every time to 15 years, says, says Hanson. They are also larger and more intense, she says. Um, that isn't enough time for the sagebrush that defines this ecosystem to fully recover between fire cycles. Climate change is making the cycle of cheatgrass will die more, che more cheatgrass worse as summers because become hot, hotter and drought increases. Uh, Hanson says a primary goal of a land manager here is to interrupt that cycle and maintain the native plant community before the tipping point where it would become a permanent grassland dominated by cheatgrass. Since the early 20s, TNC has worked with landowners, biologists, government agencies, nonprofits, and volunteers to restore and conserve this ecosystem. <clears throat> uh, boost bunny numbers and provide land for the rabbit's grain production. Uh, the tens of thousands of aircrafts of this threatened habitat that uh, TNC protects and restores give the ecosystem and species dependent on it, including the prism rabbit, greater sage grouse, and sagebrush sparrow, a fighting chance of survival, and in turn species like pygmy rabbit draw people in to care more about the oft overlooked sagebrush sea.
once uh, such person is Peter Lancaster who grew up in the region and fell in love with the sharp stepper and the rabbits. Um, he compares the rabbits and other species threatened by extinction to the dots and lines that together complete a painting. How many can be removed before a work of art becomes unintelligible on uninteresting, he says. The pigeon rabbit just one color in this landscape. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, Lancaster scored Eastern Washington for signs of the tin tiny animals. In 1998, uh, after two years of looking, he found an active burrow in what he calls pristine sagebrush shrub step, only to hear a road radio nearby. The land had just been purchased for development. What to do? I contacted the investor and bought the entire parcel. Uh, Lancaster says, a month later, Lancaster and his friend Paul Schuster purchased another parcel, just a short hop from the first. Uh, with less than 50 individuals left in 2001, the Columbia Basin Pigeon Rabbit was a whisker away from the extinction. By 2001, thought when the rabbits were added to the Federal Endangered Species List, protecting land wouldn't be enough. It was time to launch a rabbit rescue. But figuring out how to help them breed and survive will take, a, will take a lot of trial and error. First, the live biologists from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife captured uh, 16 of the remaining, remaining rabbits and brought them to the breeding facilities at Washington State University, Origin Zoo and uh, Northwest Track Wildlife Park. But captive breeding proved challenging with little romance and poor survival rights. Uh, one main culprit in breeding and lack of genetic diversity among the small group of survivors. So in 2004, state fish and wildlife scientists launched a genetic rescue. They interpret the surviving Columbia Basin Pigeon Rabbits with Idaho Pigeon Rabbits, meticulously maintaining at least 75% Columbia Basin genes in each individual. Pregnancy and survival rates improved. In 2007, the first batch of these captive bred rabbits was released into protected sharp step habitat. Within months, so all 20 disappeared, most likely eaten by predators. After all, even wild born Pujmi rabbits have a natural survival rate of just 15%. A uh, biologist pro devoted to a sort of bunny head start program designed to prepare Pajmi rabbits for life in the wild, says rabbit will die biologist Gary. Starting in 2011, with volunteer help, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife fenced in for multi aircraft coyote proof and closures on sharp step habitat. It was like a Hilton hotel for rabbits, says Jelly. We provided every comfort. Each enclosure, the size of several football fields, was equipped with PVC burrows, along with netting to deter raptors. 
that it's well provided with some water and commercial rabbit food. There were even little shelters. Soon the enclosures were hoping with baby bunnies and the biologist cautiously began releasing, uh, releasing uh, them each year on the lands owned by TNC, state agenc agencies and people uh, Lancaster. Um, efforts to track the rabbit grill. In winter, when so health real animal science, Jelly and quills survived the release areas for evidence of survivors on their death can dance. A tiny palm, palm print in the snow here, a fresh burrow and dropping the a dart in blue or brown fur. All were hopeful signs of leaf bunnies. Using fecal samples, the biologists can even track individuals, says Jaylee. When a rabbit is re uh, when a rabbit is released into the wild, we collect a small tissue sample to get its genetic ID, he says. Uh, our partners with the University of Idaho conduct genetic analysis on this samples and can tell which rabbit they came from. The data gave Jelly an estimate of how many released rabbits survived to adulthood and how many are wild born next generation. The surveys also revealed a difference in survival rates between enclosure bred uh, rabbits and dial wild born of spring and thought the data was just emerging, something wasn't quite right. In 2015, Jelly says the survival rate of enclosure bred rabbits in two areas was very poor. However, wild rabbits in one of those areas were surviving better. Every life uh, wild fire forces a setback. That all changed in 2017 as Jaylee standing on the ridge line watched flames spread toward the Beasley Hills breeding and closure. In a last ditch effort, he and the crew on site raced to turn on irrigation, hoping to save some bunnies. Later, Jelly and a group of firefighters, smiling through soot covered faces, delivered more than uh, uh, 30 trembling little survivors <coughs> to a reliever team of biologists. But at least 85 other prisoner rabbits perished, including 26 already living in the wild. We lost our biggest and, uh, and best breeding facility, Jelly says. Jelly now sees the <coughs> 2017 file as a blessing in disguise. Uh, the enclosures were good at making the rabbits comfortable and therefore also good for breeding lots of rabbits, he says. But they didn't prepare them for life in the wild. Perhaps the soft start at the Bunny Hilton was a little too soft. The breeding and closures themselves had also begun to have dire problems, says Jelly. Seeds of invasive plants like uh, cheat grass has, has, had been stirred up when the fencing was installed and the sagebrush the rabbits really relied on had been overgrazed. Boys, a parasitic organism called Coccidia, passed in decaying fecal matter, had spread rampantly, killing baby rabbits. Since we had rabbits in the same area and same time, showed different survival rates. We concluded it 
was something we were doing that contributed to poor survival. Okay guys, that's it for today, so have a nice day and goodbye.